three ministers, Algerian minister, the Qatari minister, and the Russian minister, Kristenko, all said OPEC gas, you know, is going to be very difficult to make. So you have the politics and you have the reality. The reality is what? The reality is the long-term contracts. Each one of these countries has long-term contracts. Russia, Algeria, Qatar. Which means we already sold our gas for the next 15 years. So we don't control it. Neither Russia, nor Algeria, nor Qatar. You sold your gas for 15 years at a certain price. How are you going to create an OPEC, a gas OPEC, with, with gas already sold? How are you going to modify the volumes? How do you modify the price if you cannot modify volumes? So ministers, knowing the reality, said, you know, it will be very difficult to make an OPEC gas unless we have a liquid, liquid market. The only country that has liquid market is Algeria, by the way. We, right, liquid, not only liquefied, which has availability of gas that it can sell on a day-to-day. 15%. 15% of our liquefied gas, we can sell it on day-to-day. -day. I can send a boat to Taiwan, I can send a boat to Japan today, tomorrow, when it's needed. And we did. We sell gas to Japan. We sell gas to Korea when it's needed. So we have the only liquid. And it's only 15%. So how do you set up gas OPEC with 15% liquid out of all? How does Russia set up a gas OPEC with no liquefied gas, only pipeline gas? It's going to be very difficult. And then we started working with the instructions of our political leaders, we started working. We started working on gas OPEC. And uh, the draft, the first draft, was done. And uh, Russia changed its mind. When we agreed in Moscow on the forum, we agreed on a forum. We agreed on a forum of our gas exporting countries. In what year? Well, just uh, last year. And then we agreed that we're going to set up the, uh, the office in Doha. And I'm going to be the president next year for this forum. If you read the statutes of the forum, okay, if you read the statute, it's public. So you read it, you are press. So you need to read to understand what the forum is. And uh, the statutes of the forum of the gas exporting countries has been adopted by everybody in Russia, in Moscow, at the highest level. OK, so it's not a gas OPEC. It's a forum. It's exactly what Algeria and Iran had, uh, had uh, set up in 2000, I think, uh, one or two, or 2003, and where we said the forum should be a site of exchange and so forth. Of course, we defined better the, what the forum should do. So it's more of a, what we need to do in this forum is to look at uh, how we can plan. Because, you know, your gas, I mean, Russian gas, Algerian gas is already committed. So we need to plan for the next gas, you know, for the next 30 years, 40 years. What should uh, Russia do? What should Algeria do? What should Qatar do? I should not do in the next 15 years a project that will hurt the interest of the form. Or sh Russia should not do that. But we did not get there yet. We're still forming a form. We're still going to do the studies. We're going to be doing study. Algeria was the first to suggest, to recommend a pricing study of gas. It has been done. It has been carried out. And uh, Algeria is insisting a lot on a pricing study and also on the world 
and the study of the world market for gas. Because there is no world market for gas. There is the European market, there is the Russian market, and the gas market is different from oil. Oil you can produce and sell today. Gas you cannot produce and sell because you need you need to you, you need the gas pipelines, you need LNG tankers to sell LNG. We have our own LNG tankers. It costs a lot to, to do LNG tankers. Uh, so it's a long term. And the, the issue is what should, be, what should the forum do? I think we want the best price for our gas. Okay, we don't want this forum to be a political forum. We want this forum to be like OPEC. OPEC is not a political organization. It's an economic organization. When you have Iran and Iraq and Saudi Arabia discussing, even when there were problems between countries and arriving to an agreement that tells you it's an economic. Even when you have conflicts between members, political, we arrive to a consensus on what we should do on the price. So this is what we need to do for, uh, for the forum. Yeah. Yeah, Algeria, the alphabetical order, Algeria will uh, take over Qatar as a president. That doesn't mean the Secretary General could be Russia. If Russia has a candidate for Secretary General, okay, we'll be very happy to support Russia for Secretary General, but they have not presented a candidate. The only candidate we have now is the Iranian candidate. The Iranian candidate. Okay, we had Iranian candidate the last time, and then we decided we're going to give more time to the members to present other candidates. So in December the 9th, we are going to meet in Doha and uh, deal with the issue of Secretary General. Okay, and uh, we are proposing that the next meeting of the forum will be here in Algeria on the 19th of April 2010 in Oran, the same place where we had OPEC meeting last December 19th, 2008. <laughs> we have mentioned already that the U.S. going to increase its supply of gas to Europe uh, based on the demand, as you mentioned before. Some estimates, once we've heard, are um, suggesting that European uh, Union countries may consume up to 900 billion cubic meters per year. There are some less uh, optimistic forecasts as well. Uh, so you think that if, if demand is not as high, and given it Well, I answered already saying that the market uh, of gas, you know, in Europe is large. It's going to be large for everybody. But you have to be realistic in terms of the projects. When you're talking about uh, building a pipeline today, that means you are not going to see anything coming before 10 years. Because it's not the pipeline only. Is how do you get the gas to the pipeline? I mean, to order, you know, facilities, equipment, it takes two years, three years, just to order. You have to make a decision to order. Before you make a decision to order, you have to know how you're going to finance it. And who is going to finance it? Is it cash? Is it the banking? Where is the bank that's going to lend you money today? We finance most of our projects cash here. It's our banks. Our banks were not affected by the, you know, the crisis. So we are lucky in that sense. But if you are talking developing you know, new fields, you need to drill wells, you need to connect to those wells, you need to build facilities to process the, the gas, and then you need to evacuate it, and you need to close the whole deal. All the contractual, legal, you know. So 
when you decide something, we decided to do a project between Nigeria and Algeria five years ago. We're still in the planning stage. We'll do it, maybe in the next three years. So it takes, takes 10 years between the time you say I'm going to do it, the time is going to be there. So you have to take that into account, okay? And also you have to take into account that Algeria has 50% LNG. We don't have a problem. We can take our LNG to US. We can take it to Japan. We can take it to Korea. We take it to Turkey. We take it to Greece. We take it to anywhere we want to take it. So we don't have to take it to Europe. So we can decrease LNG, okay, and uh, send it somewhere else, of course, and their agreement with, uh, with uh, the uh, European uh, companies. We have done that in the past. For example, with uh, Gaz de France, we have long-term contracts. LNG, long-term contracts. Mm -hmm. But when the price of gas was higher in the US, then we shifted you know, the gas to US. So we didn't have to supply France, we could supply the US. So we have flexibility and uh, we, can, uh, we can do lots of things uh, to make sure that the price of gas is, is reasonable price for all, for all of us. But we are not, I can assure you, we're never gonna be in competition with neither Qatar, not Russia, nor anybody. That's what I tell everybody. We are not in competition with you. You should not, should not be in competition with us. Okay? And uh, there is plenty of room for everybody. Maybe in 50 years from now, we'll be in competition. Today, we are not going to be in competition. Of Nobody asked me. But the way what pipeline was very talented. Beg your pardon? When you said what pipeline is, that's everybody's laughing because of No, the you participate. We participate. We participate in uh, pipeline in Peru. We own 21% of a pipeline that's, I think, 600 kilometers. It goes up to 5,000 meters in the Andes, and two pipelines, one liquid, one gas. We are 21% owner. So if we operate there, we can operate anywhere. The question is, are we interested? interested yeah, in oh, if it makes sense economically, we would be interested. In money, it's money. Algeria wants the money. <laughs> Algeria, our law says that uh, they have to be owned 51% by uh, Sonatrack, okay? But they could be owned, 49% uh, they could be owned by private companies. But I don't think anybody wants to be owner of pipeline, including me. You don't make money in pipelines, you make money in production. So if, if you own pipelines, it's a service, it's just like a taxi, you know, it takes you from one place to the other, so it's, you, you, you get a return, very small return, because it's, it's not uh, an operation that's a risky operation, okay? Except, of course, if you cross risky countries, then if you cross risky countries, you don't build a pipeline. So you, when you build a pipeline, it's just to take gas from one place to the other, so they pay you for that taxi, you know, it's like taxi, you know, you ride a taxi, you give him money and he takes you. That's all. So he makes enough money to maintain that, uh, that taxi, to maintain, you know, his uh, salary and things like that. That's all. He doesn't make much money. Uh, the money, the money you make in upstream, in, in exploration and production. So to answer your question, we are not privatizing any pipeline. Uh, the pipeline I owned 51%, but uh, private companies could contribute. 
but no private company will come and invest because they are smart. They are not going to invest in pipelines. They let us spend more our money in pipelines. They make money on the upstream. But our interest, state interest, uh, Algeria interest is to make sure that the gas is exported. So we have to do the pipelines. And of course we make the companies pay for the transport. They have to pay for the transport. So it's not really important uh, who owns or who doesn't own as long as you, you put in place the rules of how much you pay, who has access, okay? And so all those rules are put in place in regulations here and it's the agency, the regulatory agency that controls who goes into the pipeline first, who goes last, how much he pays for liquid, for gas, and so forth, including the national uh, company. Liquefied natural gas gives you flexibility, okay? So it's part of your uh, marketing, uh, marketing strategy. If you have only gas pipeline, you're stuck with gas pipeline. If you have gas pipeline LNG, then you can move your gas to LNG when LNG is interesting or when there is no market for gas pipeline. Sometimes you don't have market for gas pipeline, so you send it to market in... Uh, and sometimes market in Japan is more interesting, attractive than market in Europe. We get more money for sending gas to Japan than sending it to Europe. I get about one dollar more. So why should I send it to Europe? Okay, so it gives you flexibility and, uh, you know, it's part of the marketing. So our policy, our policy 